I want to read a statement to you. And I want to really introduce where we're going with these next few minutes from these statements from 1 John chapter 5. And I want to read from the message translation beginning in verse 4. It says, every God-begotten person conquers the world's ways. I'm going to read further, but I want you just to realize, as a believer, you are the God-begotten. Glory to God. I love that terminology. You know, there was a time... When Jesus, this is what the Gospel of John tells us, Jesus was the only begotten. There was a time. He was the only begotten Son of God. But that changed, didn't it? That changed when Jesus paid the price for mankind, when he was raised from death, and he released the power of God in the earth. And what happened? Suddenly the only begotten became the first begotten. And he was the first of many brethren, the Bible tells us in Hebrews, where we now have entered into being also begotten of God. I like that terminology. I don't know if that flips your switch, but man, it works for me. He was the only one, but now he is the firstborn among many, and we are the many. If you know Jesus, you are begotten of God. And there's some things that that's going to mean to us further here in just a minute. But, uh, man, you're in the house. You're in the family. You are a son, a daughter, born of the Spirit of God. And you have the benefit and privilege of being in this house, the household of faith, the household of Jesus. Glory to God. Man, that just flips my switch. I'm just glad I brought it up. I don't know what it does for you. Every God-begotten person conquers the world's ways. There's a whole system out there and we know it. We came out of it. The system of the world. It's governed by fear and death. It is dominated by destruction. It has got an, uh, an agenda for every person. It is to drag God's greatest creation down and to keep people under pressure. Jesus came to turn pressure into power. He came to deliver us so that we conquer the world's ways. That's outside and that's inside. There's pressure around us. There's a system of the world. It's all over the world. Came because of sin. But thank God because of Jesus we have conquered sin. He has. And we have too now. Now that you're in Christ you have every right to rise up above the world's ways and not live in fear of these days that we are in. You don't have to fear the days we're in. You don't have to fear what sin has done. You don't have to fear the condemnation that it brings because you have been delivered. You are the God begotten. Say it out loud. I'm the God begotten. And I conquer the world's ways. You see, there's a clashing of kingdoms. You know there is. It's a clash between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. We see the evidence of it every single day. We feel the pressure of these things going on, not only around us, but even in us. And that's why as believers, we have to keep our focus on target and not allow ourselves to become contaminated constantly by an influx of all of the ideas and all of the wisdom of the world and all of the fear tactics that Satan wants to bring into your thinking. You've been delivered, but you have to maintain it, don't you? You've been delivered and born of the Spirit of God, but there's a war against your head, against your thinking, against your mindset in order to keep you under control, to keep you from being a threat and a danger to the kingdom of darkness. Well, hey, man, it, when we wake up, we are the threat and danger to the kingdom of darkness. The moment you open your eyes, the devil is nervous about what may happen because you are alive and breathing and awake. Amen. Say it out loud, I'm awake. I'm awake. See, I didn't have them say that last night, but you're the early church crowd. <laughs> so I just wanted to help you there. We're awake. We're awake. Glory to God. All right, I got to get busy because we got a bunch of things we want to deal with, but I haven't even read the full verse yet. Two verses. Every God begotten person conquers the world's ways. 
the conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. Say it out loud, I have faith. You do, you know. And here he tells us that that is the substance within us that brings the world's ways to its knees in our life. Oh, I like that idea. All this heavy pressure that the world's system and the world's ways try to bring to bear in our life, and yet faith brings all of that nonsense to its knees. You've got every right to expect it. Glory to God. The world's ways. You know what the world's ways are. There's a variety of things. It's around us. The threats to the economy, the threats to society, the threat to our economic system, the threat to all the various things, even disease and things that come from the outside. But there's also the world's ways, the ways of the kingdom of darkness to keep people in fear, to keep them in the flesh, to keep them pursuing the wrong kinds of things in their life. There are the world's ways, and then there's God's way. God's way is in total contradiction to the way of the world. Now, we know that, man. You're in church. You already believe this, but I'm going to remind you of some things all day today, or at least for the next few minutes. I'm expecting it to stick with you. The person who wins out over the world's ways is simply the one who believes Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. Said out loud, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. That's what he said here. He said, those that believe, and believe the right thing, believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He wasn't just a good teacher, in just a historic figure. He's more than just a religious uh, zealot. He is the Son of the living God. And he's brought deliverance and help and hope into every person's life that will receive him. Now look, if you hadn't received him here today, man, you're in the right place. I mean, if somebody drug you along and you didn't know what you were getting into entirely, man, we're glad you're here. And, and this is going to do you good. You're in the right place. You may feel uncomfortable. That, that happens in church to a lot of people. Uh, you don't need to be. You're among friends. You really are. And uh, every one of us have been right in the same place that you are at this moment, man. Each one of us have been outside of the things of God. And uh, every one of us figured out how to get in, just like you're figuring right now. So uh, we're glad you're here. But here's what he said about anybody that believes in Jesus, that Jesus is Lord, and that has made him Lord of their life, that we believe that he is the Son of God, and we win over and conquer the ways of the world, the system of the world that has come to destroy and defeat you, you bring it to its knees, even in your own life. Now I'm going to drop down to verse 18 because I want you to see it in what we're going to really focus on the rest of this service. He said, the God begotten are also the God protected. The evil one can't lay a hand on him. Man, I like that. That's what it says. The evil one cannot lay a hand on them. Say it out loud. I'm the God begotten and I'm the God protected. The evil one can't lay a hand on me either. He goes on, he says, we know that we are held firm by God. It's only the people of the world who continue in the grip of the evil one, which is the devil. Glory to God. Here's God's intention for you to know. That you know you are the God protected. You see, the whole system of the world and the promotion of death revolves around fear, and fear feeds it. If there's anything that Satan wants to do in each person's life, it is to find a way of striking fear of one type or another in our lives. We'd be afraid of what? Afraid of the future? Afraid of economic collapse, afraid of disease, afraid of a variety of things, afraid of our past, afraid of the sins of our household or family, afraid of something. Fear really is the currency of the kingdom of darkness, just like faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. 
It's our faith that brings the world to its knees in our life. But it is fear that exalts the ways of the world and the system that's designed for your destruction. This is why our faith life and feeding our faith and meditating on the word and laying hold on these things, being reminded of things is so valuable and vital in these days. All kinds of systems have been put in place to feed your head with all the wrong information. The kingdom of darkness had its way, you'd get a chip planted in your head where they could just download stuff right from satellite right into your head so you could just stay in fear until you're dead. I know that sounds quite cynical, but we're not taking a chip. I'll just tell you that part. You're not going to chip me. But let me just address something off of a quote that I want to read to you from Kenneth Copeland, my father in faith, a powerful leader, and you know him well around here. He said this, though. He said, when you're touchy, you're not correctable. When you're not correctable, you are not protectable. Wow. Let that soak in. There's some mannerisms or some mindsets that we've allowed to remain that just leave us vulnerable without realizing it. If we are going to be touchy, Touchy over people, what they do or don't do. Touchy over the way somebody drives and cuts you off in, on the highway, you know, which is, I grew up in L.A., man. You know, that is irritating. I drive through Dallas as little as possible, but when I do, holy smoke, man, it's aggressive. Now, I don't do as much around here. Somebody else drives, thankfully, when I'm in this city, but I have a feeling there's some aggression on the roads even here. My goodness, some people in their driving. But if that's going to tick you off, if it's going to set you off, or not just the way people drive, but the way people handle issues, situations, if you are touchy, if you get set off easily, you're not correctable. And if you're not correctable, then you're not protectable. If you're not teachable, if you can't be taught, now you've come to the early service. I believe early service people, like Pastor was saying earlier, the early service people, you're here because the Bible says, early will I seek thee, you know, and that's why you showed up early. <laughs> Although in some places, and I'm sure it's not true of you because you're the early service crowd, but some people come to the early service just because they know exactly when they're gonna be dismissed. And, and that's important to so many people. But you're not, of that, you're not of that persuasion. I just sense that about you. All right, there was no enthusiasm over that at all. So I'm, maybe I'm wrong. When you're touchy, you're not correctable. When you're not correctable, you're not protectable. God wants to protect. And he has set in place all of the things to bring your deliverance inside and outside. We have to stay in tune and keep ourselves in a place where we can follow his lead and hear his voice or understand his direction so that we are protected. So many times, I'm going to get into it in a moment, but man, uh, God will protect you and deliver you from things that you don't even know came along. You didn't even realize what you were just delivered from because you were just following his lead. Glory to God. God's given us authority. But that authority doesn't just go into action on our behalf without our involvement. Exactly. Scripture says it this way, Matthew 18, 18, in the Passion Translation reads this way. He said, receive this truth. Jesus is talking. He said, whatever you forbid on earth is considered to be forbidden in heaven. Now look, I know, before I read the rest of this, I understand that there is different ideas of what heaven really is referring to. I mean, we understand there's the heaven where God dwells and where his throne resides and where he resides in that setting. 
And uh, then there is also the stellar heavens, the universe as we know it and, and uh, that you can see on a clear night. But then there's the heavens that surround this earth sort of the atmosphere, and this is the region where the kingdom of darkness, where the devil himself really resides in his influence against the earth that was set up long ago through the sin of man. I mean, I, I don't want to open up too many cans here, but uh, it is the heavens immediately around this planet, this influence of the kingdom of darkness that we have authority to rule and reign in. Now watch this, with that in mind, I'll read it again. Whatever is forbidden on earth is considered forbidden in heaven. And whatever is released on earth will be considered to be released in heaven. Now heaven, where God dwells, backs you and me. But our sphere of influence in this score is about that heavens around this earth where there's that pressure that the kingdom of darkness is set up. We have authority here. We have the right to bind, to release. But it's not automatic, and it doesn't happen accidentally. It happens because we stand in a place of authority. It's because we exercise it. God wants us paying attention and walking in it. It's not that hard, but it is absolutely mandatory. God has set up systems for our benefit based on his covenant to protect us and keep us safe. Safety is a huge part of salvation, that he would call us and consider us safe. And some of that is this protection that we really have been given that I believe God wants us to emphasize in our own life because the fear is out there. People are afraid of the days that we're in. Some people in some places, I mean, you, you know, the, the various stories just happened again. Uh, not long ago in Texas even, where well, there was some crazy things happened right there in church. Yeah. Right in church. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. You know, I'm a Second Amendment guy. And we could go down that road a long way. And I'm for it. And God uses it. God used it there. There's all kinds of ways, though, that God wants to protect you. One lady, I love this, it's been a few years back now, she owns a, a boutique in uh, North Dallas area, and uh, actually north of Fort Worth a, bit, uh, a little ways anyway. A few years ago, she was there in her shop, and she had one customer in her shop, and, and uh, she was being interviewed on on the local television station, and there were security cameras to, that she talked us through what was happening because as she was just having a regular day in the afternoon, I think it was, a, a uh, hooded man came in holding a pistol and held it right up to her face. You could see on the security cameras him running in and came right up to the owner, held the gun, just, a, just not as far as I am from you, right here, just about on the front row, And he was there, obviously, to take her money and do something nasty. And you can see her, and she's talking it through. He burst in, and immediately, you see on the camera, she sticks her finger up in the air, starts wagging it at him, and she described what she's doing as she's being interviewed, and she said, I told him, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over you, and I command you to get out of my shop. Amen. He's standing there with his gun, right in her face practically, and then turns to the customer that was standing there also. That customer was being interviewed in this same, in this same little segment, and the interviewer said, so what did you think when she did that? And here's what she said. Well, here's what I thought. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, that's a step in the right direction. We're not sure there was faith in it. <laughs> and you see this owner again. She keeps wagging her finger. And you can see that the, 
The perpetrator here is like paralyzed. He can barely move. And then in a flash, he takes a step back and then runs out of the store just like he came in. Glory to God. So you can depend on the 45 or you can depend on the finger <laughs> and the authority of the name of Jesus. Call red a God. But those are the kind of days we're in. Those are the days we don't take lightly what it really means. There's a threat to your well-being that Satan would love to bring down on you at any point in time and it can come a variety of ways. Uh, but here's the thing that the kingdom of God gives us, gives us every right to not live in fear, but live in faith. Not live terrified about the days that we're in, but to live confident in the covenant that God has given us. You are a covenant person, a God begotten and a God protected person. But we use our words to continue to declare it, expect it, receive it, and release God's virtues and God's kingdom and all of the support system designed in this kingdom to keep us safe. Right. Glory to God. Man, I get on the airlines. I'm, I mean, I'm flying many times every month, nearly every week, not quite always, but I, I get on the airlines a lot. And so that just gives you a good, good moment of exercise in your faith. I mean, just yesterday flying up here, I just, as I was stepping on to American Airlines, their, their hub's right there in Dallas, and, and uh, uh, I just take authority over this airplane. I just call it into the ministry. I've got money invested here. I'm going to sit on this seat. You're going to take me where I paid to go, and you're going to bring my luggage with it. I tell them when I check my luggage in, sometimes I tell them, now look, I plan on seeing this again. One friend of mine, he tells how when he one day checked his luggage in over in Chicago, he lives outside of Chicago, he did at the time. He said, I went to check my bags in. I had two bags. I said, look, I need this one sent to Los Angeles, and I need this one sent to Miami. I'm on my way to Houston. <laughs> of course, the lady said, well, we can't do that. He said, you most certainly can. You did it last week. <laughs> so I just command the blessing even on my luggage. I'm going to see it again. Let me give you, though, some details about this protection, the way God's given it to us right in Scripture. There's so many ways to go with this, but I want to turn to that marvelous passage that we all have from Psalm 91. And I'm going to take the time to go through this. And I want you to hear it with fresh ears. Hear it like you'd never heard it before. Let the Holy Spirit speak these things to you. Psalm 91, verse 1. He who dwells... Now, this is a very important concept. He who dwells in the secret or literally covered place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That word shadow, you know... Uh, the Latin word for shadow is, is umbra, which is where obviously we get the word umbrella. Yep. The whole concept of the umbrella was actually designed to protect us from the sunshine, and we've adopted it to use it to protect us from the rain, and that's work. that works great, of course. But when you realize that that thing can be your personal shadow, no matter how hot it is or how the sun is bearing down, you can just carry your own shade with you everywhere you go. That's the picture that we have. We have our personal umbrella because we remain connected and covered by our relationship with God and I'm carrying my shade with me. I'm protected under the shadow of of the Almighty because I've carried and I do carry that covenant shade with me. I don't know if that helps you, man. That helps me. I'm carrying it with me everywhere I go. 
Glory to God, man. He gets into more detail about it. Watch this. This is so cool. I know you've read it. We're going to read it again. Verse 2, he says this. He said, I'll say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Now the psalmist says, this is what I say. When I realize this is what David said, I'm going to say it too. I think you could right now. Let's say it together. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. We just declare it. We're activating that shade. We're staying close and covered. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He's my protector. He's my surrounder. When strategies of the devil are out there trying to, trying to wreck things for me, they can't get to me. Why? Because I am protected. I'm under the shade. I'm in the fortress. I have God as my refuge. Glory to God. Now watch this. In verse 3, he says something here, and we're going to work on this. He said, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Surely he shall deliver you. That word deliver, we're going to see it come up three times here in this psalm, and yet each time in the original Hebrew text, it comes from a very different word. Three very different words that are all translated with the same English word deliver. Now, I don't understand why the translators did that to us, but we're stuck with it. And, uh, and so there's a lot of light, though, real revelation to grasp how deliverance comes in different ways on our behalf when you realize what these different words mean. This says, uh, and, and it's obvious from the text, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. This idea of being delivered is to literally snatch up out of trouble. You get in trouble, he pulls you out. Glory to God from the snare. The enemy, the devil, has designed various kinds of snares to wreck your days and wreck your life, wreck your health, wreck your money, wreck your family. There are snares, pitfalls, things that people fall into all the time. And sadly, even those that are walking with God, they love Jesus, but if they're not paying attention, letting the Holy Spirit really lead and guide their life, they're making decisions, doing silly things, driving like a maniac or whatever it is you do, investing your money in some goofball thing. And uh, next thing you know, you find yourself, or some find themselves, let's go with that. Some find themselves in a snare. And it's no game, man, it's, it's serious. That snare is designed to paralyze you and if possible, destroy you and if possible, further to kill you. One way or another, a snare. This is the clash of kingdoms and you're part of the kingdom of God. We realize other people get in trouble too, but there's, a, there's an agenda behind it when it comes to you and me. We are the threat to the kingdom of darkness. And if he can find a way to paralyze our faith, then he's done his job. It's too late to drag your soul to hell I'm assuming that's true for you. It is for me. It's too late. Satan can't drag my soul to hell. I belong to God. I'm the God begotten. Say it again. I'm the God begotten too. So if he can't drag your soul to hell, he can give you all the hell that you'll allow right here and right now and paralyze your faith and undermine your victories. Man, he's doing the best he can do with you. But here's what God promised. He said he would deliver you, snatch you up out of trouble. We turn to him. I mean, that's the picture we have of Peter. When he's out walking on the water, he's doing something supernatural. He starts to sink. He's right there next to the Lord, but he starts to sink. That's an amazing picture just to have in your head. But when he does, his focus was on other things. You know the story. We could go into it. It'd be cool. But he, he starts to sink and immediately he turns and calls out to Jesus, help! And Jesus immediately reached out and delivered him, snatched him up. When you're sinking, man, he's there to snatch you up. When you're getting in that snare, God doesn't, doesn't leave you on your own. 
Fend for yourself, you started it, you got yourself into this mess, you just have to waller around in it, I'll be back later. No, he doesn't treat us that way. He's right in with us, glory to God. You get in a snare, and oftentimes our snares are things that are somewhat self-induced. I didn't expect any amens on that, I really didn't. <laughs> But so often they can be self-induced. Decisions we've made, investments we've made, words we've said, things we've done inappropriately or wrong. We've just created our own mess. You know, for a lot of situations, man, the devil doesn't need to be involved, actually. He comes later to get credit for all the mess up that you created without his help. Yeah, right. All right, I, you don't have to be excited about that. Well, let's read further. He'll cover you with his feathers, verse 4. Under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler, your protection, your small shield, big shield. It's, it's faith in the word and faith in the truth. Verse 5, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Say it out loud, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. You see, God wants us taking dominion over these things not playing with it, not allowing it to remain. I refuse fear. He said, you'll not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the latest virus that they're talking about right now. You know, we've had these viruses sat before. It was a monkey thing, and then it was a Chinese thing, and then it was a Hong Kong thing, and then it was a whatever else thing, and now it's a, what is it? Corona thing, where's Corona? You know, we don't know, that's a beer, but uh, uh, whoops, flashback. Um, apparently there's a virus associated with, no, I don't know, it's, it's confusing. Doesn't matter what it is, where it came from, if the monkeys had it, or it came from Hong Kong, or it came out of the beer. Uh, whatever it is, uh, you're redeemed from it. Now watch verse 7, he says, a thousand may fall at your side. At your side. That means you, they're close. They're right at your side. Things may happen to others. Doesn't have to happen to you. He said, a thousand may fall at one side, at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. A lot of them. A lot of people may go down. That doesn't mean you go down. God loves everybody. Don't take, that, don't take that wrong. God loves those that are at your side. He loves the thousand and the ten thousand, so don't get all bent out of shape and question why, why, why. Just stick with the real truth here of what God wants us to know, that for those that will choose to stay in this place of fellowship, walking with God, you have the right to believe that though others may fall, it does not come near you. Glory to God. I want to stir your faith in this. That's what he said in verse 7. It shall not come near you. Only with your eyes will you look and see the reward of the wicked. He says in verse 9, Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil, everybody say it, no evil, shall befall you. No evil. You know, some people feel like, well, you, you know, I mean, how, I mean, you know, th bad things happen to everybody, Dennis, everybody. I mean, we're all subject to these bad things. Well, you look at it any way you want, but what I'm reading is that no evil befalls me. So you can go ahead and run with the idea that bad stuff happens to everybody. Go ahead with that. And I'm fine for you. You might be one, I know that's really irritating and cocky, but you might be one of the thousand that fall on one side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it doesn't come near me. Say, well, that's awfully arrogant, Dennis. I'm just reading. It does not befall you. 
nor shall any plague, Hong Kong flu, Corona flu, beer flu, <laughs> nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Say it out loud. The flu's not coming to my house. The virus doesn't come to my house. The plague doesn't come to my house because I'm a covenant believer. We have the right to this. Verse 11 says, for he will give his angels charge over you. This isn't something you just do on your own, man. You got help. We have angelic help. And they're not just little wimpy, cupid looking fat baby angels. I mean, there may be a few, I don't know. I mean, I hadn't seen those little fat baby ones except on painted on walls. But man, there's some big ones too. War angels, fighting angels. They come to your aid and to, your, to assist you and to protect your life. That's what he's saying. He'll give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands, they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread on the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent shall, you shall trample underfoot. Verse 14. Now watch this. Suddenly it shifts. Now we're not just hearing from the psalmist. We're hearing really God being quoted as he makes this declaration. He says, because he has set his love on me, therefore I will deliver him. Here's that word deliver once again. And now the father is declaring that because our love is on him, he will deliver us. And this is not snatching us up out of trouble. This is another word entirely that he, yes, he will lift us to avoid the trouble. Carry us to safety. Set us on high. All those ideas are wrapped up in this kind of deliverance. Doesn't it sound better to you to avoid the trouble than to get in it and get delivered from it? I mean, I want to be delivered from it, but I like this kind of deliverance so much better. Instead of going broke and then God snatching you up out of your disaster, let's just find out how God would deliver us from all of that ahead of time. If you're correctable, teachable, if you listen, if you draw close and stay nearby, you're protectable. Glory to God. Inside and out. Is this helping anybody here today? He said, I will deliver him, carry him to safety and avoid trouble. So many times you can find that you've missed trouble and we're gonna look back and realize it was there and didn't know it at the time. We made decisions, we turned down a road, we missed the accident, we walked in a manner, made a decision of one type or another and we just avoided the whole mess because God protected us. He delivered us. He goes on, he said, I'll set him on high because he's known my name. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I'll be with him. Now watch this. I'll be with him in trouble and I will deliver him. Now this is the third time and a very different word once again from the other two words for deliver. Oh yeah, we can have trouble come at us. But God will deliver us, and this word deliver means he will equip you for battle. So there's times when trouble is hit, and it just hit. Came into the house, whatever the reason, don't know why it got in, but there it is. But I've got the right equipment, my friend. I've got the authority of the name of Jesus. I've got the power of the Holy Spirit. I have the angelic host that God has said are helping, watching, and it's not just one or two. You have a house full of angelic hosts that are provided by God for your protection. See, but what happens for so many people is they're so accustomed to talking 
in terms of their defeat or destruction or their fear, that it literally prevents and limits this angelic deliverance and power from really affecting you. We can literally hamper our own deliverance by our own fear and our own words. Well, you know how it is, Dennis. I mean, any time the flu comes, it, it, I, I get it every time. I mean, all I have to do is plan a vacation, Dennis, and, and uh, right before the vacation starts, man, I end up sick. They hear the announcement, the flu season has come. Well, they get ready. They stock their cabinet with all kinds of medicine, and then they buy some new pajamas and fluff up the pillow. They're going to spend some time, man, hurting. And they know it, man. They're confident. They got faith in it. They declare it. They plan for it. They invest in it. They've limited their own deliverance. I don't know why God, God allowed this. God didn't allow it. God hasn't allowed those things. We allow them. He said, whatever you forbid is forbidden. What you allow is allowed. Say, so, yeah, Dennis, but what if you end up with it? Well, I'm delivered from it. Well, but what if you... Oh, shut up with your what up. Oh, that was so harsh. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Verse 16, with long life, I will satisfy him. This is where the title of that book you were talking about of mine, The Satisfied Life. This was really at the, at the heart of that title. With long life, I will satisfy him and show or demonstrate to him my salvation. Glory to God. That's God's design and desire, man. Now back to 1 John 4 and verse 4 from the Passion Translation. He said, little children, you can be certain that you, be that you belong to God and have conquered them, talking about the enemy. For the one who is living in you is far greater, say far greater, far greater than the one who is in the world. We have a system of the world fed by fear, but the one that dwells on the inside of you is far greater. Say it again, far greater. far greater. You see, we have within us all of the qualities of the Spirit of God, all of the authority of the kingdom of God, all of the ability that has been invested by Jesus into his body, the same authority and dominion he walked in, you now walk in. It has to be active and activated in your life. He's far greater, and he's in you to deliver you, to keep you safe. Isaiah 54, 17 in the Amplified Bible says this, no weapon, say it out loud, no weapon. Ooh, this is good. He said, no weapon formed against you will succeed. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment you will condemn or silence. Ooh. One translation says they'll be proven wrong. I like that. This peace, righteousness, security, and triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is their vindication from me, says the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. God is so invested in your success, your deliverance, your protection. He gives you his word. He gives you the resources of the kingdom. And he gives you the right to live fear-free, worry-free. Worry not, he says. Fear not. He's the Lord your God. No weapon formed against you. No disease. No strategy. No financial collapse that Satan has designed to destroy your future can succeed against you. This is the heritage that God has given us. I choose to receive it. Do you choose to receive it? Come on, stand with me, would you? We're going to pray and lay hold on it personally. The heritage of the Lord. It includes our healing. If you need healing in this place, this is part of 
what God has come to do. If you need protection from disease of one type or another, we all do. We activate it today. It's not like this is the first time I get that. You've heard of many of these things many times before. That's fine. But right now, there's something the Spirit of God has, has made urgent within my spirit. That as the body of Christ, we are laying hold on this on a higher level than we've allowed before. We are the God begotten. Say it out loud, I'm the God begotten. And I'm the God protected. The evil one can't lay his hand on me. I'm the redeemed, walking in the shadow, carrying my own shade from the presence of God. He covers me. I'm covered. I'm delivered. I'm snatched up. I'm carried to safety. I'm equipped for battle. I have what it takes in every circumstance. I'm protected in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The God begotten. The God protected. I don't know, man. I just, that just flips my switch. I want it to ring so loud and clear in you. You just can't get away from it. The God protected. It's your heritage.